Welcome to Comics Are Awesome, brought to you by Alter Ego Comics. My name is Mark, I am your host, I am a comic shop owner and a longtime comic book reader, and today I'm going to talk about the books that I like the most for the week of January 16th, is that today? Sure, we'll call it the 16th. January 16th, 2019. My pick of the week is Invaders number one from Marvel Comics, written by Chip Zdarsky, artwork by... Come on, help me out here. Carlos Magno and Butch Geis. So if you've been following the Avengers comic book written by Jason Aaron, you know that Namor, the Submariner, is on one of his tears against humanity. He has declared war on the surface world for the 327th time, but this time he's serious. Something is off, something's different about Namor this time around. And this explores what's going on with Namor, but also has flashbacks going back to World War II when he was a member of the Invaders. So we get flashback pieces with all of the original Invaders, and then we get present day material with Namor and Captain America and uh, Jim Hammond, the original Human Torch, and uh, Bucky Barnes, AKA the Winter Soldier. This book I blew me away. I was not expecting this to be my pick of the week at all. I am very confident uh, in Chip Zdarsky's writing ability, uh, but I, The Invaders has never really lit a fire under me. But this was top notch all around. Uh, the, the World War II era artwork is by Butch Geis, and man, no offense to uh, Carlos or whoever did this here. Yes, Carlos Magno. I wish I wish Geis would have done art on the whole thing because I love his artwork. Uh, he penciled several different runs on uh, Ed Brubaker's Captain America. Uh, that, yes. <laughs> and Carlos Mag Magno does the present day stuff. A lot of that involves Namor and uh, kind of trying to unite Atlantis in his war against the surface world. So... There is a really, really interesting uh, last page reveal in here, so don't flip to the end. Don't read any spoilers on the interwebs. Go out and pick up Invaders number one if that's your jam. It was mine. Next up, we will stay with Marvel, and we'll actually stay with Namor and World War II with Marvel Comics Presents number one. This is part of Marvel's 80th anniversary celebration, bringing back Marvel Comics Presents uh, the series that launched in early the early 1990s and featured amazing uh, Sam Keith covers, usually featured Wolverine uh, in an ongoing story, so it was kind of a, uh, a serial, all comics are serialized, but you got a small chunk of story in each issue related to that Wolverine story, and then you had standalone done-in-one shorts featuring different Marvel characters. <clears throat> this time around, Again, we get a Wolverine ongoing story written by Charles Soule, amazing and pencils by Paolo Sequeira. Great, great stuff. And guess what? It's set during World War II, uh, but top notch. Man, the, especially Sequeira's art, it, there's so much to love about this first part. Actually, the whole book. The whole book is top notch. Uh, the second story is a Namor story written by Greg Pak, artwork by Tom Coker. And this is again set in 1945. Uh, towards the end of the war and man it is so so good it shows Namor at his best and may give us a little insight into why uh, maybe he hates humans so much and the third story in here is a Captain America story written by Anne Nascenti who uh, most famously co-created the character of Typhoid Mary back in Daredevil many many years ago penciled by Greg Land this is apparently set in the, the present day or somewhere around there Features Captain America, a little bit of Iron Man, and is basically Cap bonding with a, a young girl who maybe has had a little bit of a rough life. So Marvel Comics Presents gets a thumbs up from me as well. A surprise, again, I was not expecting to like it as much as I did, but with the creators involved, I really should not have been surprised. My third pick this week is Superman issue number seven. This explores what happened Superboy's Lost Years. So at the end of the last issue, John Kent returns from time in outer space with his grandfather, Jor-El, and he is kind of sort of all grown up. He's like 17, 18 instead of 10 or 11, uh, which is what he was when he left. And we get some of that uh, story filled in here. We get stunning artwork by uh, several different people here. Hold on, hold on. Uh, 
hold on one more second. Oh, come on, people. By Ivan Reese, uh, Brandon Peterson, and a little bit of Jason Fabach. And, of course, it's written by Brian Michael Bendis. I don't know how many times I can say it here, but Bendis really is crafting something special in the Superman books over at DC, both Superman and Action Comics. They've taken a little while to uh, get up to speed. They've been a little bit of a slow burn, but I'm really enjoying them, and I hope you are too. I hope you've given these books a chance. If you haven't, I highly recommend uh, checking out one or the other. They're both on uh, issue seven, so Action Comics, I think, is 1006 or 1007 is the, the newest issue, and Superman number seven. Uh, this is, again, a great all-around package of artwork and story uh, that should please any comic book fan. And we get a little bit of a uh, cliffhanger ending on this as well. So who knows where we're going next, but either we may be approaching a, another showdown between Kal-El and Jor-El, and this time maybe bringing around uh, John Kent, young adult John Kent. So that is, uh, or that those are three of the books that I highly recommend this week. I do want to take a second and talk about some other books that may be flying under your radar. We recently got our first shipment of comics from a, an indie publisher, a small indie publisher called Alterna Comics, and I had been following the uh, the publisher Peter Sametti on Twitter for a while and just watching the engagement with his fans and checking out some YouTube videos from Alterna. It, it convinced me to pull the trigger, also seeing uh, that there were tons of retailers across the United States that carry Alterna Comics and have had a lot of success with them. So I pulled the trigger on it. We got our first shipment this week of Alterna Comics, and the, the big selling point, uh, before you even read any of the stories, is that these are comics that are printed on newsprint. So the cost, your cost, is significantly less than buying one from the big two. So most of the alternate comics that we brought in are only $1.50. In fact, I had a customer this afternoon uh, who is a longtime reader, and he loves the old newsprint comics, and I pointed out a few to him that I recommended, and he said, at this price, I'll try them all, and picked up uh, one of every number one that we had from Alterna. So definitely recommend checking them out. I want to hit on three that I've had a chance to read. Now, we got 15 different Alterna comics number ones, yesterday and I hadn't haven't had a chance to read them all but I did read several and I want to definitely recommend three that piqued my interest and I'll be checking out the second issue the first of the one that I really enjoyed the most is called the trespasser and I don't have the comics with me because we've already sold out <laughs> of the uh, the allotment that we brought in uh, the trespasser is uh, a story that takes place presumably after something wipes out most of humanity you get a father and young daughter who are living in a cabin out in the wilderness, and uh, the father goes out to hunt for food. It sounds like food may be a, a luxury at this point, and he comes across an alien. And by alien, I mean a big gray head, big black eyes, typical alien uh, figure. And uh, he saves this alien who's caught in a bear trap, brings him back to the cabin, and uh, kind of nurses the alien back to health, and then something happens. And I can't wait. This was one I got to the end of the issue, and I wanted to read the next issue immediately. So thoroughly enjoyed The Trespasser from Alterna Comics. Also, I would recommend uh, Tinseltown, which is about a uh, young woman whose father was a police officer in the late uh, 1800s in Los Angeles. And she also wants to be a police officer in the 1920s. She's still in, uh, in Hollywood but no one will give her the time of day. Everyone expects women to be secretaries during that time, and she ends up uh, being hired by a movie studio, a fictitious movie studio, uh, to be a, a police officer on the lot, and part of it is really for her just to walk around in a tight-fitting uh, policewoman's outfit. But uh, I, the story really grabbed me. The writer is basing this character on his mother, who was a, uh, I believe it was Pittsburgh, police officer in the 1980s, 90s, and 2000s, and I, it just hooked me from the beginning. I love stories of, of the kind of the golden age of Hollywood, the 1920s. It's one of the reasons why I really enjoy the first volume and really all volumes of Scott Snyder's American Vampire. But uh, Tinseltown definitely worked for me. And finally, the third one that I'll recommend, keeping in mind I haven't had a chance to read all of the alternate books yet, is I believe it's called Midnight Mystery. And uh, this one is kind of... 
again it's set what feet in what feels like a kind of golden age of television scenario so kind of one nine hundred fifty s give or take and involves an heir to a fortune a local celebrity who passes away and he has a son that the son didn't know this guy was his father a PI is kind of hired to find him and it turns out that the the motives behind finding this young man may not be as pure as those who hired the PI indicated so this is definitely kind of this is not the best comparison but it does have a little bit of a feel of the shadow or the spirit so if you like those things then I would definitely recommend recommend I think it's midnight mystery it might be mystery at midnight uh, but I'll put the cover up so I'll be able to correct myself and you'll see actually what I'm talking about so Alterna Comics uh, big shout out to Peter over there who clearly loves comic books loves comic shops in fact in the package that they sent me they had a couple uh, word balloon stickers that said that say I love my local comic shop and if you're looking for an alternative if you're looking for just if you love comics and you just want to read good comics regardless of whether it's a trademarked character in there or not like Batman Spider-Man uh, I would recommend checking out Alterna I've been really impressed so far and I'm looking forward to stocking more of their product as 2019 goes on so that is it for this week I appreciate you taking the time to watch or listen to this episode if you did enjoy it, please like, comment, and share. Uh, help this get into the ears and eyeballs of more people who think that comics are awesome. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments if you're on YouTube. Uh, if you're listening to this podcast, you can shoot me an email at mark, M-A-R-C, at alteregocomics.com, and I'll be happy to answer those. So thanks again, and I will see you again real soon.